Welcome to St John's for our weekly update. Uh, today is the feast of the Epiphany, the day when the wise ones visited Jesus and his family. Uh, one of the things we miss because of the fruit salad approach to the Christmas story where we chop up bits from different, uh, different Gospels, particularly from Matthew and Luke, and then mix them together is we um, miss the fact that the wise ones in uh, Matthew's Gospel actually don't get round to visiting until Jesus is a toddler. And that leads to the massacre of all the other toddlers that were born about the same time. And so the story of the Epiphany is one that is complex. It contains elements that are both joyful in terms of the Christ being made known to the world, well beyond the Jewish world. Uh, it's also got the tragic element of because Herod learns about the birth of the king of the Jews, which is a direct threat to him and to his lineage, uh, he sends his men off to massacre all the toddlers, the male toddlers that would have been born about the same time as Jesus and the Holy Family, of course, in response to a warning in a dream, uh, flee to Egypt and become refugees. And so this Feast of the Epiphany reminds us that the Gospel story really does speak to the complexity of our lives. And with COVID burgeoning around us, we are certainly coming or having to come to terms with the fact that our lives are complex and that the way out of this pandemic is going to be complex. And we really don't know where we're going, but we have to put one step in front of the other. And in the process, I think we have to come back to basics, and that is that we seek to care for one another. There's a lovely tradition that goes with the Feast of the Epiphany and given that we kept the Epiphany uh, on Sunday just gone and today is the actual Feast of Epiphany and that feast days in the church go for eight days, there's this wonderful lengthy period uh, during which we can actually enter into the lovely practice of chalking the doors. So this morning we have chalked the doors of St Martin's house, which is the home of the cathedral team. And throughout the world, there will be Christians who will be chalking their doors as a reminder that Christ is to be made welcome in our homes and that we pray for the blessing of Christ on our homes and the life that happens in our homes. So do have a look in monthly notices, which contains a short liturgy you can use as you chalk the doors of your home, seeking Christ's blessing on your home and the life that occurs within it. A few moments ago, I referred to the fact that the pandemic is requiring us to get back to basics, to ensuring that we look after one another. One of the ways in which we do that is wearing masks when we come to church. I'm incredibly grateful to the members of the cathedral community for the way in which they have re-embraced the wearing of masks, how we are practicing distancing, uh, so we can be together but also keep each other safe and I think that's a real expression of um, what it is to be part of this community that it is about how we look after one another and so you know, wearing a mask is a way of saying I care about you so thank you for the way in which you have entered into that um, it's important to note that during this week, a few people who were at church on Sunday have tested positive for COVID, and there is a possibility that some of them may have been infectious while they were here. But the fact that we have got such good practice built into the way we gather means that we are more than likely have kept each other safe. So be encouraged in that practice. Um, thank you for the way you have entered into that um, opportunity to offer care to others. And so um, some of us will be feeling the need to be more isolated and distant as uh, COVID heads towards its peak here in South East Queensland. If you are doing that, um, please do let us know so that we can stay in touch with you. And if you feel like it's all getting too much for you, please uh, do reach out. 
Um, this is a time when we really do need to care for one another and we just need to assure you that we are here for you. Uh, so please do um, take advantage of that connection to stay in touch and to, to stay connected even if we have to be physically isolated. One of the consequences of the increased uh, COVID cases in South East Queensland is that our life here has had to be shaped a little in response. Uh, one of those um, consequences is that we are, are unable to serve morning tea at the moment. Uh, also, the meditation group uh, is, is um, as of next week, moving to be online only, so the meal and the meeting um, in person will be suspended for the next little while. And that's because most people have already chosen to meet online and the group actually works better in that sort of single mode. So for the next little while, uh, Tuesday night meditation will occur uh, by Zoom only. We are at the moment still able to go ahead with uh, wine before breakfast tomorrow. Uh, that's a Eucharist at 7 a.m. followed by breakfast in a local cafe. Uh, that's still possible because the cafe will have its uh, protocols for uh, addressing how we get to eat together safely. And then uh, on Wednesday coming when cows resumes, that will also be a possibility because of the way cows is set up and the way that we can care for one another by having a large open space with good airflow and seating together, but at a distance. Of course, all of this is subject to uh, changes in the health directives and, and, in, and changes in our sense of what is safe. So please do uh, keep an eye on the Cathedral website because uh, some activities may have to change with only short notice. This Sunday we celebrate the feast of the baptism of Jesus. Uh, so Sunday will be the last opportunity to have a look at the nativity scene for this year. Um, it goes away after Sunday. Um, I don't need to tell you what a significant asset this is in the life of the cathedral. Um, the number of visitors who come here even during COVID times and just get absolutely fascinated by Terry Summers' incredible talent and gift. And to wrap up this week's update, I want to refer back to Tuesday when we had a service of thanksgiving for the legacy of Desmond Tutu. As part of that service, we reflected on something that Rowan Williams had noticed. Uh, Rowan Williams once wrote that he thought Desmond Tutu was the person who was most comfortable in their own skin that he had ever met. Um, and Rowan Williams actually said that he hopes one day to be as comfortable being Rowan Williams as Desmond Tutu was being Desmond Tutu. Uh, and on reflection, I put that down to the fact that uh, Desmond Tutu understood that he was much loved by God, that he was an icon of God, and so he was able to love himself. Um, and that's why he was so passionate about others, because... Um, the second commandment that Jesus gave us to love others as yourself does require us to, um, to love ourselves so that we can love others. Peace be with you.